Hey guys, uh, I just wanted to mention the PHEV again today. I'm going on a trip out of town, uh, out to the cottage. By the time I get there, I won't have any battery. And I have a burning question that needs to be answered, and that is, what happens when you put the car in four-wheel drive lock, but you have no uh, battery left? Is it going to generate enough power to keep the car in lock? I don't know. Will it dip into that 30% reserve to make sure the car stays uh, in four-wheel drive, that, that the rear axle is turning? I don't know. So maybe later today we'll uh, pop it in four-wheel drive with no battery and do a little half an hour drive somewhere just to see does it show that it comes out of four-wheel drive? Does Is there any kind of indicator that says you can't do this when you have no battery? I don't know. If you guys know, mention it to me. Leave it in the comments below, but uh, maybe I'll try that later today. And I found a better spot to lock the uh, charging cable when out and about. I'll show you guys that right now. So if you have the tow package installed like I do, uh, an even better place to put a lock on the cable is right on the tow hitch itself. Uh, the door was a little flimsy. It will work. Um, but if somebody's going to mess with your cable, they're going to mess with it here just as well as on the door. So it doesn't really matter. I mean, this... These locks just keep away the honest thieves and the honest hooligans, right? Uh, if somebody really wants to mess with it, they're just going to simply cut it or yank it out of the wall or, you know, they're going to do what they're going to do. So I actually keep the lock and key right in the hitch box in the back now. And I put a big old dongle on here, so hopefully we'll never lose that key. Let's talk uh, winter tires for a second, guys. Lots of people don't know that you can drop a size usually. Um, rim size. These are uh, 18 inch that come on the PHAV 2018. They're Toyo. They're a real hard tire I find so they're a little noisy, a little... They do that I think to make you go a little further when you're coasting and things. My Ford Escape Hybrid was the same way. The hardest, toughest tire you can get on there. They want them to roll I guess for maximum efficiency. But uh, when I replace these with the winter ones I'm gonna try to pick something that rides a little better. Uh, I haven't decided what I'm going to get yet, but I did look and verify what size we can put on there. And by dropping down a rim size to 17s, we're going to save about 300 bucks a set. So the new winter tires I'm looking at are between 1100 and 1200 bucks for a set. That's with rims. So there's what uh, the 2018 PHEV comes with. And these are Toyo. Those are P225, 55 R18s and we're going to drop down to P225 60 R17s. All right, so I've decided after 3 months I'm not going to track my fuel consumption etc anymore. I pretty much have a good average on that. I know that I'm getting an average of 7.3 liters per 100 kilometers when I drive on long trips in hybrid mode. Uh, that's going to, of course, vary depending on how many kids you got in the back, how much junk they've got with them, how much sports gear, etc. But roughly, guys, um, we are traveling here on highways in northern Ontario. 100 is the maximum on, like, the four-lane really good highway. Most of the roads up here are 80 is the speed limit. So we might do a little more than that. might do 90 up to 100, but uh, there's a lot of speed traps out there. So we're not doing what my friends down in the States are doing, which I've seen you guys do it. I'm doing 120 miles an hour down there, and I'm getting passed. So that's why you guys aren't getting the fuel uh, consumption that I'm getting with this. And it's actually pretty decent. When you keep it under 100, this thing is fantastic. Um, also, my average when plugging it in every day is under 3 liters, 2.98 liters uh, per 100 kilometers. And I know I'm using about $15 to $25 a month in hydro. So, electricity for Americans. Um, so, that's I'm not going to bother tracking that anymore, but I am going to keep tracking the distance that I travel on electric just so I know for warranty purposes and things like that. I used to be a guy who liked tinkering and uh, always had an old car because hey I didn't have money but these new ones man I don't know how, what half of this stuff is so for me uh, oil changes tire rotations and I still do the occasional set of brakes on my wife's car if I'm really bored as well I wanted to mention I was just checking my oil here and um, this thing is scheduled in another month and a half to go in for an oil change well it's only got 400 kilometers on the motor. I'm not going to change the oil then. I, uh, I've always changed my own oil. I buy synthetic, full synthetic. It's up on the shelf. 
And uh, back in 2008, my Escape Hybrid in the book had an 18,000 kilometer oil change schedule. So why would this thing, which is using way less motor than the hybrid, have to have the oil changed every six months or um, 500 kilometers in this case? That's about what I put on it. So now I won't go any more than, um, you know, eight or nine months probably, uh, depending. Uh, I don't switch between summer and winter oil. I put in the lightest oil that I can get, and uh, that's what I run full synthetic. And I don't know, I mean, not a knock on the dealership, I know they're watching, but really guys, 400, 500 kilometers on something like this in six months doesn't need an oil change. Um, so I just check it, make sure that everything's up before I go on any trips, make sure that there's no particles or anything floating around in there. New vehicle, you never know. People say, oh, why do you check that? Hey, defects happen. I bought a lawn tractor here that's had two transmissions go in it and it's three years old. So it can happen, and I'm fighting that one for warranty right now, so we'll see. But as for the PHEV, uh, I don't agree with that six-month, 500-kilometer uh, schedule. No hey, way. There's something innovative about the PHEV I didn't know. I was looking, and there's all sand inside my door. I was like, oh, I'm going to have to vacuum that out. But no, you don't. There's a tab, and you can pull the bottom right out. Hey, hey, hey. good job. So doing 100 kilometers down the highway uh, with the trailer, we're getting 30.4 kilowatt hour use of electricity. I had to redo this shot to get my wife's leg in there, so I know it sells videos. What? I could have filmed my legs. So even doing 100 kilometers an hour and pulling the trailer, we still got over 30 kilometers in electric. Not bad. It does sound like a tractor when it's running. I have noticed at certain times Maybe it's the generator in there that's loud. I wonder if the uh, 2019 with the Atkinson motor in it will be quieter. That's what my Ford Escape Hybrid had in it was the Atkinson and it's uh, quite a bit more fuel efficient apparently. Listen to that baby hum. Okay, so end of trip guys, about 65 kilometers, we had to do some extra stops on the way today and there's what we're getting pulling the trailer. 30 kilowatt hours and 4.5 liters. Alright, so we're at camp, I've unhooked the trailer and I'm going to put it in 4x4 lock, do another 20 kilometers on the back roads here and just see what happens if I get any warning lights come up saying you can't use this or anything that shows me that it's not in 4x4, I don't know, we're going to try it and see what happens. Okay, so you can see we are out of battery. And I'm going to put it in four-wheel drive lock. And away we go. Okay, so what I'm seeing, guys, we've come about uh, eight or nine kilometers, is a lot of this. The generator is running and powering the battery, which is keeping both wheels uh, with power. And that's when we're running under 60 kilometers an hour. As soon as I touch over 60, uh, you know, start doing 70 or 80, I see... Right there we see no power going to the back tires. Essentially what the car is doing there is turning into a Honda. If you have ever driven the CRV, which I used to own one, it's the same thing. It's front wheel drive all the time, and then when it detects slippage, uh, it kicks into four wheel drive. So I know that even though we're in four wheel drive lock with that button on, I think there are times when it has to cheat because the need to reserve that 30% battery, I think is a priority. It will not dip into that reserve, and in order to save that, it switches to front wheel drive only just for a minute until the generator has put enough power back into the battery to kick the four wheel drive back in on the back. So there's no warning lights or anything that comes on the dash, and the average person isn't gonna know that or notice it, but that's exactly what I think is happening. So if you know otherwise, by all means correct me, but I think that's what's happening here, and I'm fine with that. You're still in four wheel drive 98% of the time, but to save the reserve battery and save itself, that's what it's doing. So that only happens briefly, and you have to be doing about 80 kilometers an hour, and it just does it, it shuts off long enough 
you know, 30 seconds or something for there to be some power built up and then the power starts going back to that back uh, wheel again. So that's, I believe, exactly what's happening. And of course, the final thing to note, driving around in uh, 4x4 lock mode means you're going to burn fuel because the engine has to run the generator. So I'll show you guys that uh, the liters per 100 kilometers has gone up. That's after driving 20 kilometers uh, in 4x4 lock mode, so the engine has been running most of that time. So that's all I have for today's uh, video, guys. So if you have any questions or things that you want me to look at or answer, uh, by all means, leave me a message uh, down below. And in the next video, I will try to get to any questions, concerns, or anything else. Thanks for watching.